Hello everyone, welcome back to Red String of Fate. First of all, I feel like I'm always having to apologise for things going wrong, but first of all let me just apologise if the sound quality is a little off, because I don't have my headphones with me right now, so I'm using like a cheap pair of earphones. So the sound is kind of not the best quality to me, and I don't know if it picks up on the recording, but I mean it's just background music anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Also, I know that all the games on my channel right now are like dating sims and visual novels. I do plan to hopefully buy a game soon. I'm not going to say what it is because, I mean, no one's really watching this and the reason I upload these is because I think maybe people will like binge watch them in the future or something so I guess it doesn't matter if I'm being secretive but I'm hoping to maybe buy like Tomb Raider soon, the 2013 one, and play that. So. Hopefully I'll be able to get it soon and then I'll have like a game game on my channel, you know. Like these are games but like a, an involved game because this, in these kind of games I just have to read and in those games I'd be doing like gameplay and stuff. So anyway, last time we were left with this choice. What should I say to Luke? We both have soulmates, I promise. I've had the same doubts before so I understand. I'm sure our power to see the red strings of fate is a gift, not a curse. I think I did save, so we can go back on the choice, but I think I'm going to say this one. After all, because of our abilities, we know soulmates exist. We know when people around us have found true love, because we see their strings leading to each other. Isn't that a beautiful, amazing, wondrous thing? How can a gift like this be anything less than a gift? I mean, I admit it can be annoying and difficult to live with at times, but I don't believe that the gods would intend to put this curse and disguise upon us. Have a little more faith, Luke. Also, sorry if you hear me, like, adjusting my earphones. You guys know how earphones just never stay in and mine keep falling out, so... More like blind faith. Luke mutters under his breath, but he doesn't reply further. A minute... A minute of silence passes before Luke finally speaks again. I'm not going to change your mind today, am I? Nope. I can't persuade you to quit at least one of your jobs, to get more rest and take care of yourself more. Using a sing-song voice, I grin at him cheekily. Nope. Luke sighs, but there's a reluctant smile tugging at his lips at my antics. I wonder how close we are to the end of Luke's path. I still think you're making a grave mistake. You'll pay the price with your health, and I don't want to see that. You need to worry less, miss. Worry less, mister. What do rich literature kids do to relax? Watch a Shakespeare play? Go to an opera? Whatever it is, you should try it. Luke cracks another smile, but he only gives a non-committal hum, and it's clear he's still dwelling on his concerns. I pat his arm again, hoping to offer reassurance. Hey. I'm going to be just fine, I promise. But we should get back to Aaron. He keeps peeking at us curiously. He's going to run over and try to eavesdrop on us soon. Absent-mindedly, Luke nods, sliding his hand into his pocket. I avoid Luke's eyes as I walk towards Aaron with a reassuring smile. He has an anxious look on his face. Is everything alright, Val? What happened? Nothing. It's nothing. Don't worry about it. I try to shake the nagging thoughts from my mind. I'm sure Luke's wrong. Why would we not have soulmates? After all, if that's the case, I would have found something in at least one of the books I searched through, right? He's wrong. His theory must be wrong. I'm going to choose to believe the legends, because they just have to be right. Val, can you cover table six? Take his order, he just came in. On it. I started like not doing a voice and then doing a voice and then I stopped and then I just I don't know what that was. I was trying to do like a kind of I don't even know. Like Geordie or Welsh almost. Pausing briefly to brush the hair out of my eyes, I rush out of the kitchen and stop short at the sight of a familiar boy sitting at a table. Luke? I walk over to the table, all my waitress in training and my manners forgotten. Luke, what are you doing here? At my voice, Luke looks up with a smile. Is it just me, or does he look a little sheepish? Hey, Val. I'm here for lunch, of course. 
He gestures at the mainland in his hand, and I give him another sidelong glance, remembering his fierce concern last week when he found out about my multiple part time jobs. Right, lunch. Are you sure you aren't just here to spy on me and make sure I'm not overworking myself? It's purely a coincidence that you came here right after my shift started, which you knew about since I told you last week. Luke coughs and lifts his menu higher to cover half of his face with it, shifting his eyes away from me. I have no idea what you're talking about. It was just a coincidence. I stifle a grin at him, rubbing the back of his neck, the tip of his ears turning red. There's a strange warmth spreading across my chest as at Luke's obvious concern for me. Oh? Since when you went to Chinese food? Maybe I've always been into Asian cuisine. <laughs> Cuisine? I completely forgot how to say that word. Cuisine. Cru I think. I know how to say it, but. You guys try and commentate over something like this, and then maybe you won't blame me as much. I am part. Uh, what, what's his voice again? I am part Asian, I thought. I took my head surprised. You are? You never told me that. Did I not? My grandmother's Japanese, so that makes me one fourth Asian. Really? That's cool. My gaze drops to his finger where his red thread should have been. If I remember correctly, the legend of Red The Legend of Red Strings of Fate is thought to originate from Japan and China. Could it be So what food would you recommend? Hmm? Jerking out of my thoughts, I blink at him in confusion for a moment before I regain my focus. Uh, you should try the fried rice or noodles. Our chef's best in them, so I can guarantee it will taste good. I mean, shouldn't all the food at your restaurant taste good? But, whatever. I'll have both then. Hmm. I'll have a plate of dumplings too. I scribble down his order, my gaze occasionally straying to Luke's fingers still. Tearing myself away, I give him my best welcoming smile and nod. Got it. Your food will be ready soon. Somewhat absent-mindedly, I make my way back to the kitchen to meet Luke's order and immediately get food aside by my friend, who's also working as a waitress here. Great, more of the terrible accent. Did you know the guy? I saw you talking to him. Who is he? He's cute. What? She giggles, gesturing with her head at Luke, who has now taken out his notebook and is writing in it with a look of concentration. Him? Who's that? Is he your boyfriend? What? No. I can feel the heat rising in my cheeks and I quickly avert my eyes. No hetero. Really? Why not? He's cute and he seems interesting in you. Um... He's not interested in me. I disagree. I see the way he looks at you. He's just concerned about me, as a friend. We spoke for like two minutes. How could you have gotten that? Not even that, maybe like a minute. How could you have gotten that from a minute conversation? Do you want him to be concerned about you as more than a friend? Natalie? She gives an amused, impertinent grin, giggle at my gasp. My cheeks burning, I try to disentangle my arm from her grasp. I swear I can like somewhat read, but when I'm recording, my brain just goes to mush. I have to go work, I'll catch you later. It also doesn't help that I usually record these at night when I'm kind of tired and a little bit delirious. Surprisingly, she lets me escape and I duck around the corner trying to calm my racing heart. Oh man, you mean I won't be able to do that horrendous accent anymore? <laughs> Thanks to Natalie's planting the seed in my head, now I can't help but wonder if Luke is really romantically interested in me. Is he? Surely he isn't, right? He knows I'm saving my heart for my soulmate. He knows about my plans to travel the world. There's no way he'd want to be anything more than friends. Yet, as the memories I shared with Luke race through my mind, I can't help but wonder. Okay, so it seems like it's starting to maybe get a bit closer to the end, or at least to like the second half. To my chagrin, chagrin, I told you guys I'm useless. When Luke's food is ready, I'm the only waitress free to bring him his order. Of course, just my luck. I find myself trying to avoid Luke's eyes, nervously gripping the plates as I place them gingerly on Luke's table. Here you go. Thank you. Clearing my throat, I turn to make my escape, but Luke's light touch on my arm stops me. 
I jump at the touch, my breath suddenly catching in my throat, and Luke immediately retracts his hand, apologising for startling me. Sorry, what is it? Luke stares at me, those dark eyes filled with concern, and I hastily look away. Are you alright, Val? You seem jumpy. I'm fine. Right. There's an awkward pause, and I can tell he doesn't believe me, but he doesn't push and merely continues. Well, I was just wondering, when does your shift end? Are you free this evening? What? Is he trying to ask me out? No, no, this can't happen. I have a soulmate out there waiting for me somewhere. Panicking, I fumble for an excuse to turn him down. No, I have a prior engagement after this shift. Yes, I have to do stuff and things. Great job, Valerie. Stuff. Is that the best you can come up with? Luke sends me a dubious look, but to my relief, he doesn't call me out my obvious lie. I see. If you're busy, then never mind. I'm sorry to bother you. I'll text you later and we can arrange a different time then. I force the words out of my mouth. For what? You don't remember? At my baffled look, Luke continues to explain. We said last week after the presentation that we'd celebrate by having lunch together, remember? Clearly that plan fell through because, well, I was being a jerk and we had a disagreement. Luke shrugs, giving me a sheepish smile. Fuck, I can't make S sounds. Aaron wanted me to come make amends and arrange a date for the three of us to have a celebratory dinner together to make up for last time. Oh. I wonder if this... Uh, I wonder if there's like a secret threesome ending or something. Maybe like you can be in a polyamorous relationship with both of them. I really doubt it, but it'd be kind of interesting. The rush of relief at the fact that Luke wasn't trying to ask me out on a date almost makes my knees weaken. Wow, I completely forgot that we made a promise to eat together sometime. I shake my head at myself, almost bursting into laughter at how much I overreacted in panic. Of course Luke isn't interested in me that way. He's just a good friend. Still, I'm surprised Aaron would ask Luke to pass on his message rather than text me himself. What is he trying to do? Play Cupid? Luke is eyeing me with a confused expression, and I can only guess what sort of emotions are showing on my face. I flash him a teasing grin, my earlier discomfort around him disappearing instantly. So what you're saying is you're Aaron's butler now, carrying out your master's orders, passing on his messages and arranging meetings for him. Luke lets out an incredulous chuckle. Me? A butler? Yep. You know, I think you'd make a great butler. Luke grins good-naturedly, brushing the hair out of his eyes. Would I get one of those classy butler uniforms? If so, I don't think I'd mind the job very much. The mental image of Luke in a butler uniform flashes across my mind briefly, and I will the sudden blush away. Slightly flustered, I clear my throat and smirk at him. Ah, I think you should stick to being... I think it's more like... Ah, uh, I think you should stick to being a poet. That suits you more. Dawn, there goes my newfound dream career. I grin in amusement, patting him on the shoulder. This logo in in the background is kind of reminding me of Pizza Express. <laughs> You'll live. Back to your original request about dinner this evening. I don't think I can make it, I'm sorry. I have something else lined up today. Would tomorrow be fine? A lie, but I can't very well take back what I said earlier about having a prior engagement. That would be too suspicious. I'll let him know. We can discuss more over text tonight. Sounds good. Thanks for letting me know, Luke. He nods with a smile, his gaze still lingering on my face with a strange sort of thoughtfulness that makes me feel like my emotions are exposed like an open book. Unnerved, I clear my throat and turn to make my escapade. Right, well, I have to get back to work. Enjoy your meal. I scurry away, all too aware of Luke's half-amused stare burning a hole in my back. I stifle a yawn, stretching my arms above my head as I leave the restaurant. So tired. What a long, boring shift. In my mind, I begin imagining my comfortable bed, the inviting mental image making my footsteps quicken. I need sleep. My foot was like glitching out for a second. Val, 
Where are you going? Weak sudden voice from over my shoulder almost makes me jump out of my skin. I leap back with a yell, my heart pounding. Jesus, Luke, you almost gave me a heart attack. What the hell were you doing sneaking up on me like that? Luke raises both of his hands, palms facing forward, adopting a soothing tone. Easy. Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. I wasn't trying to sneak up on you. You just didn't hear me coming, even though I've been told I walk like an elephant. Humph. Sure you didn't. Luke smiles, a glint of amusement in his eyes. I really am innocent this time. You must have been very deep in thought to not hear my footsteps at all. What were you thinking about? I cough, averting my eyes. I can't very well tell him that I was daydreaming about being reunited with my pillow. Oh my god, it's... Midnight right now. Nine past midnight. And that sounds so good, like... Ten past now. Going to bed sounds so good right now. Nothing. Knowing me though, I'll probably stay up till like two. Why are you even here? Are you stalking me again? Again? Luke looks like he looks like he's torn between laughter and taking offence to my words, and he finally settles on the former. When have I ever stalked you? All the time. It can't be a coincidence that you keep showing up at the places I work when I'm there. Luke merely chuckles, shaking his head at me. You forgot again. I can only stare at him blankly. Forgot what? The celebratory group dinner, harrowing you and me. My mind's still cloudy from lack of sleep. I can only shake my head. To celebrate the end of the group project? I asked you about it a few days ago by ambushing you at work. After discussing more over text, the three of us agreed on this evening after your shift ends as the date and time for the meetup, remember? I was waiting on the opposite street for you to come out when I saw you leaving, so I just came over to make sure there hasn't been a change of plans or something. At his words, the faintest recollection of the scheduled date and time of the dinner enters my mind, and my lips part. Oh. Crap. That's today? I knew you'd forgotten. I elbow Luke in the side at the smug look on his face and he grins in response. If he's a good person then he'll just let us go home and sleep for today and then we can reschedule tomorrow. I I did not forget. I just merely misremembered the agreed date, that's all. Just some uh Isn't that the same as forgetting? No, it's different. I didn't forget our arrangement, I was just mistaken as to when it would happen. That's very different from forgetting. Valerie's pulling like some fake news shit over here. Luke shoots me a side glance filled with amusement. But you did forget our arrangement. You had no idea what I was talking about earlier when I started asking about the group dinner. I... Oh shut up. Luke's smile turns victorious and I roll my eyes at him. My earlier grogginess has slowly disappeared throughout my familiar banter with Luke. I shake my head, my mind a bit clearer now. I swear I'm not usually so scatterbrained. I've just been overwhelmed with... I stop myself, but it's too late. We both know what I'm about to say. Luke's smile fades a little and I mentally kick myself for putting my foot in my mouth yet again. I already know how Luke feels about my part-time jobs. I shouldn't bring it up around him. Hastily, I changed the subject. So, where's Aaron? I guess I'm not the only one who forgot then. Luke's smirk returns and I breathe a sigh of relief. Unfortunately, you're still the only one who forgot. He texted me saying his class ran a little late, but he'll be here in the next five minutes or so. Damn it. Well, I bet the class thing was just an excuse. He probably forgot too and he's just rushing over here right now. He probably forgot what? We turn and see a jogging Aaron skidding to a halt next to us. Panting, he bends, bends over, clutching at his knees as he tries to catch his breath. Hey, Aaron, you're late. Uh, I'm not late. I'm exactly on time. Nope, you're very much late. Did you forget about our meeting time and date? No, my class ran late just now. I had to even leave the lecture early to run over here so I wouldn't be late. Be happy about my dedication to our friendship. I've never left a class early before. Never. I don't believe you. You can just admit you forgot, you know. What? But... Aaron splutters in indignation, making me giggle in response. He turns to Luke for help, who has been watching us in silence, an exasperated yet amused look on his face. 
Luke, bro, help me out here. She's accusing me of lying when I've made such a huge sacrifice for you guys. Luke seems like he's trying to withhold his laughter, but he soon loses the battle, chuckling to himself. Luke, you believe me, right, bro? Tell Val she's an awful friend for not believing me. Sorry, Val. I'm more inclined to trust Aaron than you. Ha! Aaron shoots me a triumphant grin, and I collapse into further helpless laughter. It's so easy to mess with Aaron that I almost feel bad for it. Almost, but not quite. Don't worry, Aaron. She's just making false accusations to make herself feel better because she forgot about our dinner. I caught her leaving right after work instead of waiting like she said she would. Well, I see how it is, Val. So this is how much we're mean to you, huh? I take a deep breath, trying to get a hold of my giggle with it, and grin at Aaron. Says the one who arrived the latest. Aaron opens his mouth to protest, but I cut him off, gesturing at the Chinese restaurant down the street. Why are we even standing around here talking when there are chairs waiting for us inside? Come on, let's go before all the good seats are taken. Fine, and this conversation isn't over, you hear me? Quietly laughing to myself, I lead the two of them into the Dragon Palace. Okay, I'm going to end this part here. Thank you guys for watching. Um, because we did this in love is strange i might just check it here because i found out we had like photos that we could have unlocked we've got this one which is super cute i think that's the only one we have right now oh we have these ones this is the cover art and this is what i use for the thumbnail and we have this okay and i guess as we play we'll unlock some i don't know if i've missed any already or if we'll unlock those later i don't know but Thank you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all in the next video. Hopefully I'll have like a new game soon to play that will be like a game game, not just a visual novel. Not that there's anything wrong with visual novels, I really like them, but it's just kind of reading, and I want to like do more let's plays, you know? You guys know what I mean. Bye everyone.